साधु 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 नमो तस् भगवतो अरेहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस् भगवतो अरेहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे नमो तस् भगवतो अरेहतो सम्मा संबुद्धसे self care what is self care in buddhism the whole practice of buddhist teachings is a self care practice why do we say so if you can remember the two extremes which the buddha had to ascetic uh, siddhartha had to give up were deviations from the self care practice so he himself understood that pursuing the self pain giving lot of pain to the body will not bring him to the happiness peace on the other hand he understood earlier in his life before he started off his uh, uh, search for the truth search for the happiness that over indulgence in happiness is also another extreme and he understood by himself that he also couldn't find uh, the path to true happiness so he gave up those two ends why is it because he wanted to look for the self care now the issue in today's world is either people become so much selfish or people become so much altruistic i wouldn't say it is altruistic i would say so much uh concern about others only so that means we the abstract in the talk is that if you want the <laughs> final thoughts about the talk i will give you some heads up in that way that we need both self care and other care you should not choose one or the other but unfortunately sadly a lot of people due to ignorance they choose one or the other if you choose one or the other you are trapped you are trapped into the uh issue here people such people do not have enough self care now uh, there is a pali word for uh, self uh, what is the pali word for self atta a t t a atta atta means self uh, in many places the buddha said that we have to take care of ourselves why is it it is to me it is to us is like um fastening your belts i would say buckling your belts seat belts maybe in, uh, on a flight it is said that you do not try to fasten other people's belts you have to do it first and then to help other people why is it that is the way how it is supposed to be so in the same way if we are not taking care of us uh, as needed then what will happen to us is that we feel that our energy is going to be drained and there come some energy vampires around us energy vampires they uh, vampires you know it's a false concept is sucking the blood but this is called energy vampires when people see you that you are always uh, giving a helping hand which is good in a way but they might take advantage of you you are an easy being and then you can be easily um, you know Uh, mistaken i would say 
drag into disadvantages. So now we have to understand here that self-care, just as the other care, is very important, right? Uh, so after, in many uh, Dhammapada stanzas, Buddha talks about that you need to take care of yourself. How do we take care of ourselves? Any thoughts? How do we do that? Uh, eat well. I think everybody wants to eat well. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, love ourselves. That's that's the over uh, role idea. But if we break into pieces, small small fractions, eating uh, good food, right? Why we have to? Why we are supposed to eat good food in the self care? Then you start into uh, spread some self care to your body. But that has some limitations, right? If you are so much attached to your body, that will develop some other issues. But, <laughs> right? But you should like your body, get to know your body, because this is the body where your mind is occupied. If it is getting sick, if it is going through some issues, it can hinder, it can disturb your Dhamma practice. Right? Can you tell your body, please do not get sick? No. Body gets sick if you do not take care of yourself. So that means we have to uh, eat healthy food. It is good. Eat well means eat healthy food. Not even that. Buddha is not concerned about what food you are eating. He is concerned about how much you eat. Are you concerned about that? Huh? Are you concerned about what food you are eating? Now, today's world, when people are conscious about their eating habits, they are more conscious about how much carbo I have to eat, how much protein I should have. Now, in the, the university I work as a Buddhist chaplain at UBC Vancouver, they have some apps which means that students can um, feed their intake of the food, breakfast, lunch into the self-check-in app. Let's say they buy uh, a Greek yogurt, small uh, pack, and they, have to, they can actually check in the, uh, what you call it, they can do their maths, how much and all that. It's more about uh, what food that people eat is what they understand by eat well. Uh, it, it might be sensible, right? Because if you are somebody who is eating only meat, maybe if you are somebody who is only eating uh, plants, vegetables, fruits, you might have an imbalance of your food. Yeah, it, it does impact in a way. But Buddha was very much concerned about how much you eat. I think this is a big issue in today's world. That means how many times and how much. What is the word for that? Bhoja nature, matanyota. Matan, matta means dosage. Bhoja nature, matanyota. This is a big issue in the Dharma practice. Now, why monks uh, do not eat after midday? I mean, at that time, they started eating actually. Monks were eating all day before. Have you, do you know that? Yeah, they, they were eating, even the Buddha. But what happened was that they, they encountered problems. They didn't know where to go, where to approach the house. So they went into the back door and the house woman, women, house people thought it's a ghost. So they <laughs> threw the <laughs> uh, water because they're having this robe and no power. Uh, and then they were scared about these beings. And some monks, they fell down on the road. The roads were not even, they were not asphalted. And uh, there were issues. And also, uh, with these conditions, uh, those conditions might not be uh, valid for today. We have power and we know everything. Uh, then what happened? The Buddha suggested that uh, eating certain meals only can help your uh, body uh, to practice Dhamma. That is the plan. Right? Uh, but somebody might say, no, I want to eat. That is how I feel good and I can practice my dham. And when some people come to the Jetavana Rama temple, uh, Buddha saw that uh, there was one man who did not eat. So he was like very distracted. Then he asked, 
what's going on with you? He said, I didn't eat. Then he asked some monks, bring him to the kitchen and give some food. And then uh, monks gave. How come he was given food by the evening? How come there was food in the kitchen by that time? That means they had a stock of food by that time. Right? So but later on, uh, you know, uh, as Sangha becomes, uh, you know, more and more, the practice of uh, eating a few times and then uh, moderation was highlighted. So they drop eating and some monks even drop uh, two meals too. Uh, you don't have to because it, it, it is a, a tradition at that time because you have to face for the conditions that are arising at different time. Now we don't have the conditions in the 5th century BC. We have different conditions now, novel, new conditions at, at the moment. So we have to face those conditions. Say for instance, monks uh, get, gets on a flight, 13, 14 hours flight. How does he decide his uh, meal hours? Uh, gets in the flight from Singapore to USA. Where is his dana time? Can you tell the crew that I'm not eating, I'm looking at Singapore time? So listen, uh, what is this? You have to eat whenever I tr uh, serve you. This condition is new condition. At that time, they did not fly, right? So we have to adjust accordingly. Otherwise, you will become ridiculous people. You become ridiculous, especially from the people, young generation, because they are the people who are taking over your positions one day. We have to adjust. It is not that we are craving for the eating. We are adjusting to the society and then do our Dhamma service. So, Buddha is more concerned about moderation. That means you are balancing out how much food you eat. That is very important. Why is it? What if you become a compulsive eater? Now you sometimes work uh, online. You might not go to your cubicle in the workplace. Then you see the fridge over there and then you see uh, fridges over there. You see that there are food available inside and you open and eat it. Open and Every time you see the fridge uh, food is over there, right? So, we might be compulsive eaters. But if we only eat in moderation, that is self-care. Eat well, at the same time, eat in moderation. And then uh, I think Kim kind of murmured about the sleep. A good sleep, that is very important. Right? Do many people sleep well? Oh, they have a lot of excuses. No, no, I cannot sleep. I had to watch some YouTube videos. Uh, I have to turn on my light and then watch videos. They are so much obsessed with other things. But your body needs a good sleep. Even though you cover that sleep uh, late morning, you can't get that good sleep. Right? You are sleeping before midnight. Otherwise, you in the morning, you might run into arguments. Why is it? You haven't had enough sleep. Right? You might run into a lot of negative problems, akusalas, because you are not physically enough, uh, fit to practice Dhamma. This practice of Dhamma is not only, not only mental. Some people think it's only mental. I medit and I meditate, everything will come back to me. Like a panchia, it's not like that. It is very much connected to the body. If, if you are messing up with your body, your mind will be definitely messed up. Right? So that's how we look at it, uh, you know, sleeping well, have a good sleep, eat well. What are the other ways of taking care of yourself? Do self-care to you. Exercise. Huh? Exercise. Exercise. Physical fitness is very important, right? So it's very important to exercise. The body likes to move around, right? No physical body likes to be stationed in one place. What about the mind? Does mind like to stay in one place? No, it wants to go everywhere, like a monkey. Then what about the body? Body also wants to move around. Then body is very happy. Yeah. You witness by yourself. After a long walk, your body feels very good. It is happy. But when body is in one place, you feel happy mentally, but body is not happy. That means you have to walk the body, just as you walk the dogs in your household. You have to walk, otherwise uh, you are not taking care of yourself. But people make a lot of excuses. I don't have time to do my workout. 
I don't have time to go. Right? They are mental problems. Maybe they are created problems have taken over their exercise part. What are the other ways? Eating, sleeping, and then exercises. Huh? Hobbies. hobbies, certain hobbies. What kind of hobbies? Something that makes you feel happy, I guess. Uh, hobbies, habitual things. Good. <laughs> but not like collecting stamps, huh? <laughs> yes, we will talk about that. I mean, uh, it depends. It depends. Like, uh, what if it could be teaching Dhamma? It can be a hobby too, right? And you are enlightening people, you are giving the preciousness of uh, life, which you cannot understand sometimes in your lay life. Yeah, they may have. Uh, yeah, different people. So, some uh, habits, because we form habits all the time. When you say that uh, someone is bad, it is not that person is bad. That person has been forming wrong habits over a lot of many years. When you say someone is good, it is not that person is good. That person has been forming good habits for many years. So, in this way, we can talk one and uh, one by one about these uh, things to make self care okay let me tell you something over here before we jump into the different steps uh, other than what you uh, brought up now in one dhamma teaching the buddha said that there are four types of people living in this world that we need to understand and you are one of them first person is overly selfish very much selfish right now um, uh, you know they are so selfish for whatever the reason right uh, they cannot think about others maybe there are other reasons involved with that maybe they are very stingy they are very greedy they are sometimes not stingy greedy but they are thrifty they are very thrifty they are minimalist they are too much minimalist. You don't have to. Right? Uh, so, they are only concerned about themselves. Too much about it. So, uh, this is the first kind of person. Too much selfishness. This selfishness, selfishness can go in good ways and bad ways. Often times you see the bad version of selfishness. What about the good version of selfishness? Have you ever come across that kind of a thought? There is a good version of selfishness. Now, after a whole day of meditation, dana, you might feel, uh, I have been creating a lot of good karmas today. I should be better than all the other people in the crowd. Maybe the people I know. So you might be perhaps developing Sakkai Ditti. Right? That is why at the end of every ceremony, we are supposed to share good karmas with Deva, Naga, Mahidika. Why is it? Do Deva need our good karmas? Do they need? They don't need. They don't need. Because in one sutta Buddha says, if your relative became a manussa, human, if your relative after the passing away became a manussa, human or Deva, they don't need good karmas now. At the moment. Because they are already living there as a consequence of doing a massive good karma. They don't need at this point of time. So then why do we share good karmas with them? Because at the end of very good karmas, we might end up with selfishness in terms of carrying that wholesome karma forward. So whenever we do that, we feel ah, I share with everybody. So it is not only my good karma. Right? It is not only my good karma. Yeah, this good karma has been shared among others. Right? And don't be uh, greedy to share good karma. Huh? There was a conversation a long time ago. Somebody was really concerned. Can I share? I, I, don't, think I, so I don't think somebody else can give me good karma. I said, it is. You, that person can. You can also. It is like a pond, a pond in a mountain. There are no rivers bringing water in and out. But you see crystal clear turquoise water. 
in this pond, in this lake. How does the lake gets water? Uh, water is bubbling out of the earth. How come? Fountain. In that lake there is a fountain. So the more water is going out, the more water is bubbling out of the earth. Right? There are no rivers coming in and out. So, if we share good karmas, you get more good karmas. Uh, happy news. <laughs> share more good karmas. Because on one side you have done a good karma, you have that side, and you are using that to share good karma. So two sides. Right? One uh, thing, but two sides. Two in one. Not three in one. <laughs> two in one. Right? But a lot of people, they are sometimes greedy to share because they think my good karma can be lost. So that is the reason why we are supposed to share good karmas. Even I think that day, I think I gave a talk about uh, mindfulness. I said in the mindfulness uh, sutta, what we call Satipattana sutta, the Buddha says that once you practice uh, any Satipattanas, Finally, you have to practice that particular satipattana exercise, be that breath meditation, walking meditation, whatever, whatever meditation, internally and externally. Internally means looking at my body, the meditator's body, and looking at other people. Now, let's say I, I do my breath meditation now. Does that mean I have to just check, feel other people's breath? That is not going to work. That is unnecessary. I understand mentally that other people also breathe in and out. So I understand this is not only a phenomenon that is exclusively for me. Then what happens? Any progress that you are creating through any exercise of Satipatthana is not going to give you any selfishness in a good way. Right? So that is very important to uh, understand. So the first one is extremely selfish one. Second one, extremely altruistic person. Have you seen people who are always doing for others? They don't take a shower, they don't sleep. If you ask, oh, I'm giving a ride, I'm giving this, I'm doing this, I'm doing oh, the whole time this person is for other people. Uh, the other people who who are expecting that person's help also appreciate, ah, you are such a good person, you know, you are helping everybody, so please keep it, keep it up. They are doing that very well too. That person will never understand what's going on. But sometime in his or her life, he or she might feel, there's something wrong in my life. There's a vacuum in my life. I think I haven't uh, improved myself in a certain area of my life. Then, the ti then your life is almost gone. You might be an old person, you can't be active that much, right? That's why don't wait, don't wait till you get old to practice Dhamma. Start it today, right? Some people are waiting to be get old, right? Because they have this cultural understanding about Dhamma. I had to be uh, an old Upasaka, Upasika. Dhamma practice is very different from one to one. So start it today. One day you are making a lot of progress. But if you wait for that day, we don't know what will happen to you. But if you get sick, you get a chronic pain, you get something, you are not able to do anything at that point. And you are developing self-hatred. Oh, I couldn't do that. I should have done it earlier. I could have done it this time, that time. So you are creating self-hatred towards you. Don't wait. So the second person is overly altruistic. So simply put, I would say selfish person and altruistic person. Selfish only, altruistic only. Third person is both selfish and altruistic. A person is both selfish and altruistic, but finding a, a good balance between these two and then uh, practicing the Dhamma. The fourth person is neither selfish nor altruistic. Now who would you like to pick up? Maybe who are you out of these four? <laughs> what do you think about these four? Huh? Ah, we are supposed to be the third type. We shouldn't be selfish people. We shouldn't be only altruistic people. 
we should be neither altruistic nor uh, selfish. We should be both selfish and altruistic. But this selfish the word is a loaded term. It, it carries connotations, different other meanings. So we have to sort of understand the Buddhist meaning. Here the Buddha says that selfishness means uh, you are caring yourself. Self-care and other care could be better terms over here. So uh, please pay more attention to these four individuals and be the third person as you said. Right? All right, now let's get to what we can do to increase our self-care and other care at the same time. What are the things? The first thing is that I would talk about practical things and we will in incorporate some other Dhamma things too. The first thing is be nice to everybody. Be nice to you, be nice to other people. Are we nice all the time? Only when we want. We, we want to be nice. But is being nice a habit to us? Not necessarily to many people. Right? So we are supposed to be nice. Why is it? If we are mean people, then we will mess up with our Dhamma practice. How can we be nice to us first and nice to other people? Have you seen people who are very kind to other people? Very compassionate. You feel that from the bottom of their heart. You feel it. How come they can do that? They must have definitely developed lots of self-care towards them. In other words, I would say, you, you may have seen some people who have uh, been giving lots of love to other people, especially in their relationships, uh, in their maybe uh, uh, upbringing, maybe in their, uh, I would say, uh, other activities in their life. If you see that, they have reasons. Maybe their father, mother have really taken care of them. Now that daughter, that son, bring in that love forward. Have you also seen some people who have been raised up in a violent neighborhood, maybe violent family? That person may carry that violence into his or her relationships, into marriage, into whatever they are, even to the workplace even to the road, right? So that means this is a very communicable problem, right? It is a, a communicable issue. That means not everybody can think about and then become nice people. I think there is a physical reason. There are physical grounds, reasons for people to be nice, kind. So first the Buddha says we need to be nice to us. How can we be nice to us? Practice metta. Are we practicing metta to us or are we practicing metta to others? How do we start off? Us. Okay, how do we practice metta to us? Huh? How do we do that? Wishing well to ourselves. Could you be a little bit more specific about that? Uh, may I be well and happy? Simply say, may I be help, may I be well and happy will create any difference in us. Uh, then we go to those things: eat, eat well, sleep well, take care of us. Uh, we have to go down to nail down to those areas of our life. There are people who always say that in the morning, but they never have a good sleep. <laughs> they never eat mod in moderation. They never eat healthy stuff. They never eat. Uh, they never do such things in action. Right? There is no action plan. Only theories are going on all the time. Morning to evening, there are theories. Right? They listen to a bunch of Dhamma talk, read a lot of books, but nothing goes to their heart. All stuck at the head level, mind level. They are the same beings. But if you talk to them, they know everything. <laughs> they know all the things. But they don't progress in their life, in real life. No application. Right? So, um, metta. How should we practice metta? Now, me, we are talking about be nice. Be nice step. This is the first thing we can do. More self-care while caring other people. How can we practice metta? 
we have to practice unconditional metta. What is it? What is that unconditional metta? Huh? No expectation. Okay. How does it work for us? Now, in our life, if you pay closer attention to your life, are you accepting your whole life, whole self? Or are you always with that issues, mental chatter issues? I am not, I am not uh, good, I am not beautiful, I am not pretty enough, I am not uh, well received by other people, I am not I haven't done this and that. What is coming up when you think about you all the time? You wake up in the early morning. You might go to the mirror and see you from the mirror and you see all the things right? at that point. <laughs> but after that, uh, what are the thoughts that when you look at yourself about you, what are the general thoughts, impressive thoughts about you coming up? Are they mostly uh, good ones or some sort of uh, struggling ones we're supposed to be yeah we're supposed to be but because we are always looking for perfectionist thoughts we are going into uh, different other ideas so that means you are not accepting yourself you are practicing conditional metta towards yourself that means uh, if this is going to work for me then only I can take care of myself so I have a test result coming up, then I think I cannot, I cannot accept that particular problem in my life. If other people are doing this way, then only I will be good at that point I can think about self-care. Why is it? You are not looking at yourself with full metta. That means you are not mostly accepting your full self. That is why the Buddha said, practice metta to you first. You have to practice unconditional metta. Unconditional metta does not mean couple of affirmations. It means you are going to accept the whole of you. Maybe you are messed up in a recent uh, project. Maybe you are messed up with something in the past, last year, couple of years back. Maybe you have been uh, blamed by your family members. Maybe you are in a very abusive relationship. Maybe you are uh, with a person who is always, uh, uh, you know, um, nagging, winning, and then maybe different problems. Are you able to accept yourself? Or are you still thinking, I need to change some of the things only, at that point only I am going to accept myself. That means you have not been able to practice full unconditional metta to yourself. Then you can't do metta to others. Believe me. You will never do that. So you have to accept your good version and bad version and give full metta to you. Thereby you are able to do other care. Now what will happen to many? When they are not doing self-care to others, they are going to do other cares to others. Have you seen such people? In my, uh, let some people make this statement. In my child, I remember one uh, uh, person who was telling me, in my childhood uh, there was no uh, we, we hadn't, we had not, uh, we, we didn't have the opportunity to go to a swimming pool. That was somebody told me actually. But today's time, everybody goes to a swimming pool. Every child has the ability to be sent to a swimming pool. So, this person does not accept her child time. Always struggling to look at that child time. That is a different time, that had different conditions in her time. Right? But maybe you, you had something different from today's people, right, at that time. So that means people do not accept uh, their full self. If you are not accepting your full self, that means you cannot practice metta to you. That's number one. To be nice. In the practice stuff to be nice, then the self, uh, other care. How can you do other care on a daily basis? Tell me some examples. How can you do that? 
what are the easiest ways to do other care? Caring for the parents. Huh? Caring for the parents. Uh, that is something that we all, we all are doing. But on the other hand, like a simple thing, maybe somebody is going through, I think most of the people are going through some bad times, time to time, right? You are helping them with some good words. Maybe you are complimenting them, uh, right? I know uh, a gentleman uh, from another country, he does not talk a lot, but wherever he goes, he's trying to see the name of the person who is serving the customers. So once he goes back to, to his wherever he is, he is putting a very good comment uh, in this shop, this particular lady or maybe girl did a very good service to me. She is a resource to your center. She is a rich person. To you. So then, companies are very much concerned about the reviews. Uh, Yelp could be for the restaurants. Google review could be something very important. So, she or he might be getting some promotions at that point. Are we thinking that way? Or only when we are mad, we go to the Google review and then write something very bad. Worse experience. <laughs> See how people look at it. You can be nice to anybody wherever you go, right? But we don't do that. You can uplift somebody's life in a short, free something, right? Uh, what about other ways to be uh, practicing self-care? Listening to others. Because we always like to chit-chat, huh? we are chatters most, most of the time. We don't want to listen to others, right? So if you listen to others, that is being very nice. Always we try to talk. We always want to want the last word of any conversation. Then what happens? You are not nice. I mean, I'm looking at it from a very broad picture. So, uh, listening to somebody and helping somebody in whatever the small, uh, large ways, and you can be nice first to you and to other people. Try to improve this practice. This is one of the very good ways of practicing self-care because then you are balancing out self-care side and the other care side. Second is that practice Brahma Viharas. This is a very interesting way to uh, keep up with your self-care, other care practice. What is Brahma Vihara practice? There are four higher ways of living in our life, personal life, societal life. Metta, Karuna, Mudita, then again Metta comes up. Start with Metta, then Karuna. What is Karuna? Compassion. Do you know that the Buddha had this uh, great compassion? Nowadays when you, lot of uh, people are forgetting about Karuna. Right? Now when you look at the Buddha in Mahayana philosophy too, they talk about Maha Karuna, Maha Prajna. Right? Buddha had great compassion and great wisdom. Actually in our life, uh, the two pillars of our good life should be one side karuna, one side prajna. Right? Uh, because of some ways of practicing dhamma, lot of people have been very selfish. They don't have karuna. They don't, they don't even pay attention to other people. Right? That's why when you read excessively about some of the texts without a good teacher, you become very selfish. Ah, so many suttas to read. Huh? You read in your own way and then you come to an own understanding about it. But you don't know the context about it. Right? Especially reading from online. A lot of bad translations. Almost many. The Pali context have not been properly translated. Right? They are translating from the dictionaries. That is the issue. So, um, Karuna is very important. But today, topic is also Karuna. I initially suggested uh, compassion fatigue. Uh, it's a word. But then we thought that we need to simplify to you because you might think this is a very psychological <laughs> word. <laughs> so, we put it as uh, doing self care without losing uh, other care too. Right? Maybe doing other care without losing self-care. Why Karuna is very important? You know that every morning after Buddha's sleep, he practices great compassion. How does he do that? 
every morning after he woke up he had a habit of looking at somebody who needs my help right early in the morning are you doing that when you wake up who can i help you help today or you are thinking whose life am i going to mess up today <laughs> people do that today i'm going to make something really bad to somebody how bad is that morning the start of that morning but buddha he woke up he thinks about who am i going to help today during my today it's such a very good attitude are we learning from that are we doing that we are not doing that why is it because you have most of the people have not studied the buddha's life adequately they go to suttas they do a detour the bottleneck is that their practice is not smooth right you know the bottleneck when you are going on highway all of a sudden all the couple of lanes going to be narrow <laughs> you don't know how to put your car you never expected that maybe constructions ahead but if you know that before life can be as tough as that narrowing then you understand we have to learn from the life of the buddha first and then to read suttas because suttas were given to different individuals not to you unless you don't unless you know the proper suttas first study well about the life of the buddha now the most important thing in the morning that buddha said is that once he woke up he is looking for somebody or some to help out tell me some examples how he did it some stories who are the people he did it could be anybody when you are going to help you are not looking for buddhist people christian people muslim deva brahma he is very universal he is was a universal our practice should be the same be that may that person may be a different religious person i mean like any one could be yeah but we pick but, but we pick up with the humans uh, and then because help for the animals can be uh, easier than uh, helping a human right yes. animals don't talk <laughs> but when you going to deal with the human you have to think about it you know how he is going to respond Uh, how his relative was going to risk how his wife husband going to respond so you had to prepare yourself so that is tougher than helping an animal but you had to do the both as time permits you so what are the examples what are the stories tell me some stories that is how he helped during the day uh there were many stories including this one uh, there were many people who were going to die that particular day so then he stopped doing the temple activities he uh, he realized he would he would need to go to that place as a very urgent trip he ha- had done it couple times many times i uh, remember bahia daru chiriya was a man who went on a uh, ship voyage but ship was wrecked in the sea so other people died and he was managed to he managed to come back to the shore but he was naked so he thought i would find out some uh, you know used wood and then uh, show other people i am an arahant i can get something out of like today today and today's world at that time also there were fake arahants you know right 
Now in some countries they have some uh, crash courses for becoming a Sotapan and Arahan. They think it's such easy, right? <laughs> crash course and then the course and they're all getting crashed <laughs> Some, somewhere in the journey. <laughs> So then um, he started showing that he's an arahant because he's not he's naked partly, and he has in, he has been using some uh, wood petals, uh, and then uh, one of the uh, mothers of his sansaric life, she was a deva. She has been following this son, but now she's not his mother in this life. Long time ago, she said. What you are doing is not ap appropriate. You have to go and see the Buddha. Don't uh, fake arahants, right? And then he asked, where is the Buddha? Said, Somewhere in the Savatthi. So he went and then he saw the Buddha. He has uh, departed for the uh, Pindapatha and he met the Buddha. He, he said, Bahi Daru Chiriya said to the Buddha, Bhante, can you teach me some Dhamma? Then the Buddha did not say anything. Second time also he did not say. But the Buddha knew to, in the morning what is going to happen. Third time he said, I understand. Uh, then he taught something. Very interesting. He said, Ditte ditta mattang, sute sutta mattang, mute muta mattang, vinyate vinyata mattang. I always tell people in my classes, do not pick up everything that is happening outside and then bother your mind. As humans, we are not supposed to pick up. But how, what, what is happening in our life? Are we picking up everything outside? Unnecessary. It is unnecessary. Right? So, the idea of those four statements is, when you see something, just think it is only a sight. Do not investigate that anymore. When you hear a sound, just treat it is a sound only. Do not investigate a lot. I mean, of course, in your family household, you have to. I mean, other things, unnecessary things. You might be driven by many other things. When you, um, like this, always try not to investigate. And then in a moment of time, he was attacked by a pregnant cow. He died. And then the Buddha said, monks, uh, cremate this arahant. Oh, this man became an Arahant. But as a lay person, now there's a saying that uh, when you become an Arahant, you can't be a lay person anymore. You must be a monk or a nun. Right? But you can be an Anagami, Anagami lay person. You can be a uh, Sakatagami lay person. You can be a Sotapan lay person. But when you are becoming an Arahant, you can't be a lay person. Definitely you are going to become a monastic. Then the Buddha said, make a pagoda for this gentleman. And that day, Buddha saw that, early morning, I need to help this gentleman. In that way. There are many other stories. Matta Kundali story, what is it? Matta Kundali, the first story of the Dhammapada stanza. Mano Pubbangama Dhamma Mano Setta. First, first stanza of the Dhammapada. What happened? There was, a, uh, there was a child called Matta Kundali. But his father was a very stingy guy, very greedy person. So Matta Kundali suffered from uh, anemia. You know anemia, right? Lack of uh, blood, right? Probably the lack of the iron in the blood, I think, anemia. So he did not treat his own son because he's very greedy for his money. Then at a certain point he thought now if he dies, people come to my house. So he brought him outside the house. So he was suffering a lot. Then the Buddha saw him early in the morning. Then he sent some aura and with a uh, imaginative Buddha. So he saw that. He was happy and he passed away. So compassion. What is important here for you is that try to think uh, every morning what good thing I'm going to do today. Maybe to yourself, maybe to other people but mostly to other people because it will do a two in one <laughs> help to you. When you only think about you, it might do uh, the other side too. I mean, focus on yourself too, but try to do something to other people. That means karuna. Then mudita. Mudita means? Huh? 
uh, be should be able to happy for other people's achievements yeah are we really able to happy for other people depends on what they achieved huh? yeah. huh? Dep- uh, depends on who depends on <laughs> uh, depends on who depends on what they achieved why is it why are these small issues are taking us over that means our minds have not developed to that level every day you are listening to dharma talks you go for retreats but why the mind is such our mind has not gone to that level sadly right but there may be people who are not doing anything good but they are naturally good people have you seen such people they are not going to any buddhist centers they are not listening to any dhamma talk but they are naturally good it is something like somebody does not know how to uh, cook uh, so he has to she has to go to a cooking class but there is somebody who is bornly a good cooker does that person need to go to a cooking class now don't think that you are coming to a buddhist center just because you have to learn only you may be naturally good but if you are good enough you don't need to so mudita means being able to happy for anybody regardless of who what no wh issues that is being a real buddha's follower right that is being a Bu- the real true buddha's follower you don't mind about it be that a christian buddhist or your friend your relative uh, whoever but you are able to be happy fourth one upekkha upekkha means uh, equanimity what is upekkha being able to stay in the middle of your balance. yeah balance in your thoughts or whatever the things happen into you we normally get very happy when something happen when something happens wrong we get very unhappy so don't do that try to stay in the middle that means when something happen when something happen in a good way it doesn't mean that you are not accepting that you are accepting it but you are not too going to be too happy about it when something goes wrong you are not going to be too sad about it try to stay in the middle we call it upekkha that will make you eternally happy because upekkha is the highest quality uh, in a, in anybody's life so now when you are nice you have to concern about self care other care in different way especially your language you are speaking things and other couple things and then the second thing is that you choosing brahma viharas how do you practice brahma vihara one week you practice metta second week you practice karuna third week mudita fourth week upekkha so when you are supposed to be karuna but you are in the third week you are practicing upekkha so you say no 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 i am not going to practice karuna this time you know it is not like that you have to practice brahma viharas simultaneously as conditions rise and you are rising and you are responding to those conditions with whatever the brahma viharas the third way how to self care and practice other care is that use affirmations what are the affirmations you can put up some of the things maybe in your on your desk in your room positive things yeah. right every day when you wake up when you are thinking that way who am i going to help today at the same time you are reading affirmations affirmative things i want to be a kind person i want to be a uh, person of mudita upekkha or oh, are you somebody who is going to those messy uh, you know youtube videos violent things or oh, other people gossip early in the morning and you turn the tv on and watch all the trash news that is not going to help you practice self care either you will be very upset or you, either you will be very selfish about it affirmations are very important affirmations to you affirmations to other people one of the very important aspects of self care is that feel grateful to what you have right nobody is going to be happy without being grateful that is the first virtue the buddha told us how did he do that when he became the buddha he spent one week of 
uh, looking at the Bodhi tree without blinking his eye. This could be a uh, funny thing for some people. But it is not funny because you are respecting what you've been receiving from others. Do you always check in with yourself? How many blessings do you have in your life? Do you do that every day? Or do you, that, do you do things like this? What I don't have in my life? And I'm thinking more time for that every day. It is like you are comparing sun to the moon, moon to the sun. Can you compare? They are two different things. Sun can never be compared to the moon. Moon can never be compared to the sun. They are two different brands, two different gigantic aspects. Right? So, you need to be grateful every day by thinking how much blessings you have. Right? What are the blessings do you have uh, when you think about your life? Tell me some of the blessings, common blessings. Good health. Huh? Good health. Good health. That is a blessing. Other things? Good job. Still got a job. Uh, a roof over your head, some food to eat. Then a uh, job. What other things? Children. You may have a good husband. Huh? You have a good wife. You don't always think that way. Not even thinking, you have to tell them. I'm grateful to you, I'm thankful to you. Some people are grateful only in their mind. Other people don't feel that. You have to tell them. Then of course they understand how much grateful is this person to me. And other things? Grateful that parents still alive. Are grateful for the parents for what they have done and then they are still alive. What are other blessings that you are having? Don't be quiet, then I think you have no blessings at all. <laughs> huh? Kalyana mitras. Can we practice Dhamma without Kalyana mitras? We cannot. We need their inspiration too. Other things? Huh? Opportunity to listen to Dhamma. Opportunities. What are the personal blessings that you have in your life? Huh? Can laugh easily. Oh, that's a very good way of looking at it. Actually, being able to smile is very, it's a, it's a good blessing. Some people cannot. Yes. Now, a couple days ago, somebody asked me, why is most monks are not laughing and smiling? I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they are talking about happiness. Yeah. Right? Because when you are carrying a lot of weight over your head, I think a lot of people cannot smile. Right? Because we always think about, oh, so heavy, I had to address this issue. Okay. Huh? If the person cannot smile, how to make the person happy? <laughs> then we have to find out shortcuts to make that person happy. <laughs> or long cuts. <laughs> well, I mean, happiness is a choice. They have chosen the difficult way, right? I think uh, being able to smile without a hassle is a, is a very good blessing. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are so many blessings that if we look at every day that we have. So it is very important to think about, reflect upon, realize that I have blessings. So then that will help you to uh, think about, oh, I am really grateful and I feel that I am doing more to myself and to other people. What else we can do? Speak of money. Huh? Speak of money, they propose to money. Ah, we, we need money to live, not money just to make, right? If we have enough money to live, that is enough. But a lot of people don't think that way. They are going under a, an unending pursuit of money. That is a big problem, right? And also, a couple of things I want to mention. Uh, Self-care and other care can be easily done also by looking at the bigger picture of everything. Now, oftentimes, people look at something small in their life. If they're running into a problem, they see things like black and white. But we don't see the bigger picture of the issues, bigger picture of that problem. If we develop our mind to see the bigger picture, then it is easy for us to think about this self-care and other care. Example? Peace in the 
Yeah, that is looking at uh, bigger picture in a way, piece where you are in. Now recently somebody approached me and then asked that I want to learn the repentance meditation. Repentance meditation. Okay, I said uh, leave about the repentance, regret, repentance meditation. I said why are you regretful? And then that person told me it is about uh, that I have not done certain choices. Mainly that uh, this person had a relationship with somebody and then the, the person that this person is with also had a relationship. They both ended and then became together. Now this person is thinking I made, a, I made that person uh, what you call uh, devastated. And I said you both haven't done it, you both made a choice. That is why you got together. Then why do you need to do repentance? Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> At that point, this person realized, why should I regret about it? Why? Then I said, why you are looking for a meditation now? Unnecessary things. Right? That is why if you look at the bigger picture, you can minimize lots of issues in your life. Right? Look at the bigger picture. Maybe you haven't done it. But you are adding up unnecessary weight to that small thing. Because you are not... Of course that this person approached me because I am trying to make more clarity about it. But before that, haven't been able to see the bigger picture. And also one of the very good ways of practicing self-care is that try to practice a certain meditation, at least a short meditation every day. With that I am going to finish. Why is it very important? Why is a small meditation very important? I call it another name for this, sacred pose. I did a retreat about it at Tiratana Vihara some time ago. Sacred pose. What does it mean? Sacred pose means now you may be cooking, you may be doing dishes, you may be cleaning up your house, you may be talking to people every day in your household. Try to take a pose, do a pose in each activity from a certain day. Do not continue make a pause and then start back that particular activity. When you make a pause, you start to understand that there is more clarity that you can practice. Now one of the good ways to practice is a uh, few minutes of breath meditation every morning. Not at night. At night your mind is very messed up. Morning is a good time. One day if you can, you can do so. You are trying to uh, practice breath meditation. Not even that. During the day, you are trying to uh, be more aware about what is happening to you. Trying different poses with different activities. That will help you understand how many blessings that you have around you. How much self-care that you can do to yourself and to other people. In other words, we could say reflection. Reflection is very important. Sometimes you listen to Dhamma, you read books, you go to retreats, but you never reflect. So you are trying to feed a lot of information into your mind, but you are not reflecting what they are. Right? You are becoming a robot at the end, because those things are not going to work for you. Reflection is very important. This is the advice which the Buddha gave to his son. What was his name? Rahula. Now his son passed away before him, right? You know that? At a very young age. The monk Rahula passed away before the Buddha, for whatever the reason. So, the Buddha said to him, reflect before you think. Reflect during you think. Reflect after you think. Reflect before you talk. Reflect during you talk. Reflect after you talk. Reflect before act. Reflect during act, reflect after act. This is the best meditation. It will open up horizons in your awareness practice. And you will see more insights, 
more areas to develop in your self-care practice and other care practice. Once again, if you can remember what I said, reflect before, during, after in your thinking, your speaking and your actions. Otherwise you can't do this. Otherwise you medit your meditation will be a satipattan practice in a center. When you get up, everything is gone. That is why this method is very good to you. Start practicing it. One thing, like you want to reflect on before, during and after, so your mind must be very mindful at the time also. Uh, yeah, yeah, mind, you are, are not making... You are you won't be able to realize it. Now, that is what we are going to do, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah mind has to be developed to a certain level to do that. Yes. So if you only develop the mind in a retreat, if you develop your mind only by reading a book, once you stop reading the book, mind will be undeveloped. Right? If you go to a retreat, five, six days, you think mind is so good now. But once you get up, once you come back home, where is that good mind? Now say for instance, you come to meditate here with me. Eh? I sit down, you sit down. Will you have lobe at that point? You know that you are going to meditate. We need meditation when we do, do not stay in the comfort zone. Right? That is where we are struggling a lot. We have to bring that. So the easiest way is to reflect before, during, after your three dose. Think, thinking part, speaking part and acting part. So now I want to recap before we go into the uh, discussion. Uh, Q&A, any Q&A questions? Self-care must be done along with the other care. The Buddha said, if you are simply selfish or if you are simply altruistic, they are extremes in your life. You will never be happy. So we must practice self-care as well as other care by balancing out the nexus, the intersection between these two. In clear terms, in your Lay term, layman examples, I would say, while you are caring yourself, your maybe eating habits, sleeping habits, maybe uh, I would say other life pursuits, you are also concerned about other people. You are both concerned about you and other people. You are not doing one or the other. You are not picking up one or the other. You are not doing more on one or the other. You are parallelly bringing them up and then spending your life and then in order to do that we we need to be very nice to us and to other people we need to um, practice four brahma viharas we need to practice uh, gratefulness and we need to practice some affirmations and we need to practice finally a sacred pose a reflection practice so this is what i've been telling you today so if you haven't done this uh, self-care other care at the same time Today is the starting day, the turning point. Miracles will happen from tonight. <laughs> All right, any questions? Do you have a mic over here? You can give it to him. Huh? Yes, so other people can hear. That is why I always say, in your Dhamma practice, you need a level of smartness. Dhamma practice is not something where you are trying to become a victim to other people. It is like you are going to, let's say you are somebody from the fire brigade. You are going to extinguish the fire. Then you will die in the fire. Huh? Are we supposed to, are they supposed to be so? These Bomba people here, right? 
they get into the uh, fire they going to they are supposed to extinguish but by a serious mistake one of the individuals of the fire brigade burnt it could be the same you are going to empathize then you're going to be the victim you are not supposed to be so <clears throat> in practicing any good thing uh, brahma vihara or any good especially brahma viharas let's say you are doing uh, other care you must know you have to level up your smartness what kind of smartness is this i'm talking about you know that i usually take a, an example from a story uh, in the kuddaka nikaya in this story the story is about a cobra who took precepts i always tell this to people keep this in mind all the time this is very important to all of you whatever the good things you learn uh, you will not do any of those good things if you don't know this story so the story is very important there was a cobra and then he wanted to go to a hermitage to see a sage tapasa ascetic the cobra thought every time i was going here and there he he sees that this ascetic is calmly meditating and doing good things so he thought one day you know at that time the jataka stories these animals used to talk right in whatever the ways we don't know it is true or not but anyways we had to take the story uh, not these individual things so he went up to the ascetic and he said uh, the ascetic i want to take five precepts the ascetic said no you are a cobra you cannot practice uh, the, the first precept and then you will break it oh he said no i try my best please give it to me after couple of request he said okay i'm going to give it to you but the most important part is you have to report to me at the end of every day that how you practice sila during that day he said okay i will report to you is like in the retreat that uh, retreat uh, conducting person asks you to come and see him uh, during the retreat how is how are things going on he said okay then on the first day after receiving precept he went somewhere the cobra unfortunately a farmer was stacking a firewood with different wood what happened he got stuck into that uh, stack the farmer also did not notice that he then uh, you know tied the stack together he brought it to his house then when he put it on the ground he saw a tail wagging out of the uh, the stack oh the snake then he thought a snake may be a poisonous one then he just uh, you know tap the area of his tail he didn't do anything because he is a now he is a seal cobra cobra with some seal huh? <laughs> not normal cobra so so he was very uncomfortable because he was stuck into the you know the firewood uh, stack somehow he managed to uh, walk away after all these issues then in the evening he went to see the uh, ascetic uh, he has to report right so uh, from a far away ascetic asks uh, how is your sealer today the very first day then he said to the ascetic see what happened to me only first day only one day i took precept then uh, he asked what happened to you he said at the same time i took precept i was trying to go somewhere then i was stuck in a uh, stack of firewood and this happened to me then the ascetic said the most important thing which we have to learn just because you took precepts that you know you are not supposed to sting bite but at the time you got stuck you could have shown that you could bite so that the person is getting scared and he will let you go that means when you are doing good things you should not be victimized by anybody you have to have some smartness in your practice you are not going to do it but you are maintaining your uh, what you call parameters moral parameters it's not being unkind it's not being uh, mean to other people you know how to do it otherwise other people are going to some other people most people can be going are going to misuse your kindness misuse your compassion try to empathize try to be kind but never get trapped into their 
uh, fires, right? It is like the same example which can happen to a person in the fire brigade. The good example is the cobra who had seal up just for one day. He got very upset about it. Mm -hmm. So that is the way. Practice some smartness similarly to your practice. Metta karuna muta opekka. Okay. Any more questions? What is happening is that uh, some people are pestering. Some some devotees can pester. In Sri Lanka, it happens. Bhante, I made the vatlapan today, pudding today. You have to eat it. <laughs> if you talk about Sri Lankan monks, Bhante, I've been making this coconut sambal since 4 a.m. today. Please eat it. So they had a uh, custom that just to pe uh, please the devotee, they are going to eat it. That is not self-care. I think in today's world, everybody knows food is a big issue to all of us, the way how we eat it. Now, on the other hand, when you say overfeeding, when you bring in dana to the temple or wherever, vihara, there may be young monks, so they want to eat some food. But if you make it in one way, you are only feeding the elderly, uh, probably some monks who have some sicknesses. So I think it is the monk's duty to adjust to the conditions and then uh, behave so. Uh, because uh, to me, I think it's not overfeeding because you do it out of a lot of respect. So everybody, if everybody is going to reduce their level of dana and then uh, that is going to make another issue. Of course, you are bringing uh, healthy food, definitely. Uh, let's say even you bring healthy food. There is one monk who wants to eat a lot. Let's say you are not bringing junk food from those fast food train, uh, chain. You are bringing healthy food, but there are there may be one monk who want to eat, who want to overeat. That person gets sick. So it is not that what food we are bringing, how much food you are bringing, that you do it out of your respect as a devotee. Monks have to understand what they are supposed to do according to the time according to the place where they are living now. Now the role of the monks should be changed. It is not like the Buddha's time, eat something and go meditate in the room. That is ridiculous. While they are doing their meditation, they have to engage with the society. They can walk, uh, they can go for a walk, and they can maybe clean up. There are lots of things they can do. So I think the common ground is that both parties have to understand how to proceed. Uh, with those traditional things, with the current conditions. Otherwise, uh, lay people only cannot uh, make a solution for that. So, what I suggest is that bring your own dana the way you want, right? But monks have a choice to eat whatever the food you are bringing or not. And after eating, they should have a healthy uh, way of practicing their, what you call, other things, other small, small activities. So that is what 
not even Sri Lanka, even Thailand. There was a very long article in uh, The Guardian a couple of years ago, the monks getting diabetes. It is not because devotees, devotees are offering. It is because they are only looking at their self-practice and eating food. Why can't they think about uh, other areas of engaging society? There are lots of people are suffering from drug abuse. Youth need certain level of dhamma. So if they are looking at certain levels, they might be more engaged to the current society. So that they are burning a lot of calories and they will eat properly. Right? Now what happens, you are bringing all the rich food, they are eating in the same way and they are trying to behave like the time. Uh, at the Buddha's time. But at the Buddha's time, monks didn't live in the temples. You know that? They were walking all the time. Monks only lived in the temple for the Vassa. Three months. Other nine months, they were on the go. But now, they stay in the same temple for the three Vassa, three months. Also the next nine months. How is it going to be practical? At that time, this is why I'm telling this Vassa thing, Katina and all Vassa thing. Uh, they only station in one temple for three months. The nine months they had to travel to other places, centers, right? It is not happening. So I think they have to adjust. I don't blame anybody. What I say is that you should understand how to do it and never ever reduce anything out of it. Do everything with a lot of sadha and they have to understand what to do in their role. It could be exercise, it could be more engagement, as such. But if they are not doing that, they get sick. Especially a big issue in the Sangha is that uh, diabetes. It's a very big issue because uh, they are not physically active. right? Because they always say body is not a big issue, only the mind. <laughs> and they teach people like that. How come you say so? Because Buddha says in the Dhammapada and many places you have to take care of body. You have to walk in many suttas. Who told that version? Can you separate mind and body? In one example, can you separate mind and body? No, mind and body are two parts of your life. So you have to equally look at mind and body. So that is how we have to look at it. I think each, each party has to uh, practice a role in their life. Otherwise, they will be sick all along. And other problem is that uh, in some Theravada countries, uh, uh, those conservative Buddhists don't like monks are more engaged in physical activity. Those are stereotypes. They are very much stereotyped. This is a big issue. I mean, uh, I remember when the uh, ex-president in Sri Lanka gave a very large gym, gymnasium to the monks in a university. Some people opposed this idea. So they are university monks. They are studying, so they have to uh, uh, have some fitness. It's not that they are trying to bodybuild, <laughs> right? Like if you look at the people who go to a gym, not all people are going to do bodybuilding. They are just going for the fitness. But people think anybody who goes to a gym, they are trying to bodybuild. It's a stereotype. We have to dispel that. So that is one issue. Most monks are not comfortable in uh, being physically active. Now Western Sangha is okay now. If you look for a Sangha in the, the US, Canada, so we are in a society, people understand us. But uh, not many people understand. So it is also a problem why they uh, become sick. So we have to have some awareness. Any questions? We can take a couple of minutes, otherwise we're going to transfer the good cards. Maybe you can talk louder if it is uh, giving some troubles in the mic. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just now you were talking about the reflection for before, after, during and after. Mm. Like uh, for us, sometimes anger is a very problematic. Mm. You get angry first after the build up, then you realize that's too late. Mm. So they said there's a problem of anger. So that mm. during a person get angry, how can be before that is impossible? That is how many yeah. people think. That's the problem. That's how that is how many people think. 
so we have to train the mind to spot that I am coming up with anger that is a practice when you train your mind train your thoughts you understand you uh, you understand that now I am coming up with anger anger will not come up come up rise without a reason but if, if anybody says I haven't I can't notice my anger that means that person's practice of reflection is too low not too enough because there are indications you are breathing faster you are breathing heavily you are puffing something unusual happening so these all are indications of something going wrong so if we haven't been able to pay more attention to that that means it's a problem so I think uh, this type of uh, thinking I mean it's not about you I think in general comes up because they haven't trained their thoughts it takes time it can be a, an outcome of a crash course seven day retreat it is something much more than that it is a practice 24 day 36 24 hours 365 practice all night long all day long that is how you're going to respond to that anger jealousy whatever the emotions any other questions over this side Uh, no questions mean that ah, there is one question over here, yes. Uh, can I share the story that you see the, the scientist Einstein, when he talks about his role, mm -hmm. because Einstein is a very smart genius, I think maybe because he tried to think before he talked, maybe he spoke after he spoke. So when you talk about this role, so for you can see a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, very wise men, intelligent men, they talk this role. I think maybe, uh. maybe this is a reason. Uh, I don't know. I just try to. I think uh, think before think means reflection. That means whether my, my whether my this particular thinking lead into akusala or kusala. That is the reflection. You not not another way of thinking, right? Reflection, we are talking about reflection. Reflect before you think means is my upcoming thinking uh, leading me to create akusala or kusala? I think we can do that choice, right? We can make that choice way before. Uh, that, is, that is what we are saying by reflection. Of course, about the speech, you can know that, right? Uh, what I'm going to talk to this person today? Am I talking proper words? Am I being kind in my words, right? Am I kind in my speech? Am I kind in my actions? But if you catch up the issue at the beginning of your reflection, then you can minimize the hassle. Some people start thinking the hassle after uh, making and then making some lame excuses. I know, you know we are humans, huh? we make some errors, <laughs> don't worry, like we are robots. <laughs> right? That is a lame excuse to my understanding. Because if you know what is kusala, what is akusala, then you know those 10 kusalas, 10 akusalas. Why can't you bring this framework as a launch pad before you think? Is this particular activity creating akusalas or kusalas? That is the uh, way how we are going to practice reflection. So we can minimize lots of issues in our daily life, lots of problems. And some people make some other excuses, you know, I, I was not bad, but just because this person talked to me like that, I also talk like that. Right? <laughs> they are lame excuses, they are not really uh, true practice. Nobody should be able to trouble you, to your thoughts, if you are really practicing well. Alright, I think there, oh, you have a question. <laughs> Yes. Okay, just want to share. This self-care thing, right? In order to practice self-care to me, I think it's learning how to say no, to push back when somebody encroaches onto your personal space. Huh. And uh, I think the process, um, I've lost friends. I've lost family members too. Huh. Because, you know, in our desire to be nice and respectful. Can you share us one example? Non-harming example. Yeah, no names. <laughs> yeah, no names, but no just, names. A, just yeah. a scenario. Situation, yeah. It's just like a, 
Have you lost family members? Yeah. One example, yeah. Um, I was going through a very, very bad phase, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, it was a terrible loss, a personal tragedy, mm -hmm. and um, the wound was still very raw, and um, I felt that they were very insensitive. Mm -hmm. They um, they did things that uh, a normal human being shouldn't do mm -hmm. to someone who's grieving. Yeah, and I pushed back. Mm -hmm. I said, no, that's, you're being disrespectful and I'm not taking this shit anymore, you know. And um, as a result, they got very unhappy with me mm -hmm. and we all ganged up. And they ganged up? Ganged up. Mm -hmm. And it was a, you know, you were going through a very painful period. You've lost somebody very dear. And then the whole family just said to me, I have to go through the grieving process again. Mm -hmm. Not only grieving for the loss of someone dear to me, but the loss of my family members too. So it was like a, quite a shock. Mm -hmm. Because you expect during that time that the people who should be with you should be your family members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and um, for, for a period of time, I questioned myself, was I too emotional? Was I too harsh in pushing back? Yeah, then I, and I thought again, okay, then I started reading more, finding out about the Dharma. And I said, okay, impermanence. That's it, gone. <laughs> Not all relationships have got to be permanent. I don't have to be so attached to the ties. Um, I think I've got to take care of myself too. Yeah, because it's, it's giving me a lot, of, a lot more pain to be, to be with people who are not understanding, who are not sensitive, who don't care enough. Then I think I've got to maintain a distance huh. for my own sanity. Good. So, okay. yeah. I think the ideal uh, way to have it done is that uh, not uh, uh, letting, uh, letting other people felt uh, something that much so that they're gonna get uh, ganged up you know the ideal way but it didn't happen because some, when some when these things happen into somebody they get really uh, you know uh, probably very uh, uh, trouble and they are not able to find clarity because you are questioning why they are doing this to me and then you you also get very much uh, you know, uh, troubled by their situation, but it happened now. So, uh, yeah, self-care is not always saying pushing back, because on the other hand of self-care, we have to understand that we should not make enemies. That's very important. Never make enemies, even though they are eligible to be an enemy. Never make enemies, because enemies operate in limbo, behind the scene. If you make enemies, they are operating, they are functioning, they are gossiping each other, they gang up faster, right? So, in my understanding, you did the right thing in a very fast way, uh, just to save you, yeah, it's good, because I don't think everybody has to do this uh, protection, I would say, uh, self-care in the same way, everybody cannot do. But if you ask me the ideal way, uh, somebody could have done in a way that other people don't feel that much you know uh, provoke because when they are provoked they are doing things behind the scene that is unnecessary because let's say there are five six bad people that we have to struggle we have to deal with so we know what to do we know that we have to uh, leave our space wherever it is sub belong to but we have to do it without letting them provoke. You need some sort of smartness. Smartness, then to wisdom. Skills. Huh? Skillful. Yes, yeah, skillfulness. That means smartness. Like that cobra. Yes. Cobra who had one day seen it. <laughs> we need some smartness. So when they are trying to uh, attack you, trouble you, uh, you should have not been very uh, confrontational in the first place. Try to see what could be the ideal thing I could have done to these people? Then you are minimizing any unnecessary issues because they are bad people. They may be bad people. They are not very wise people. Right? Now let's say you are going on a road and a stray dog comes to you and going to bite you. Initially going to bite you. Are you going to bite him back? 
you are trying to save yourself because he is bad so in the same way we we have to do that similar thing that exactly the thing that you did in a way that other people are not getting provoked and that is the fine line in that place we have to address that fine line i think you need i mean no, in your case now you have done it so nothing to do after that other people i would say if this is happening to you in your life then you should try to see the smartest uh, response to that kind of activity uh, don't try to be worried about how other people behave they are they you are you so you are trying to minimize any provocations any hassle but you are doing your you are saving yourself you are saving your inner space and you are good so that is how we had to look at it. all right so let's now transfer all the good karmas because the time is up may all the good karmas which we been accumulating today be transferred to all the departed ones who passed away in the name of all of us if the departed ones uh, were reborn in a place of discomfort may they be able to release from those places if they are already in a place of uh, comfort happiness may they be able to improve their lives and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu 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 may deva naga mahidika also be well and happy may they share all the good karmas and then may they bless all of you for good health quality of life and prosperity sadhu 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 and finally may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana and also in this endless sansaric journey may we be able to be in the company of the kalyana mitras because kalyana mitras are very important to all of us without kalyana mitras we are not able to practice our dhamma journey consistently with a smooth flow so uh, thinking thus we going to make a wish imina punya khammine mami bala samagamo satang samagamo hotu yavani bana patantiya